Okay. Good job, man. I like that testimony. All right. So, uh, Chris cannot be here tonight. He has some, uh, he's taking care of some other obligations that need his attention. So, he asked me to, to, uh, to do this. Okay. So, I'm not talking about sex tonight, which is awesome for me. Man, I could use a break from that. Um, we are going to talk about what is absolute truth. That's what we're going to talk about today. And let's pray. It's about to do that for some reason. All right. Lord, we come to right now. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you there is none like you. Lord, we pray today as we talk and as we discuss your word that you just open our eyes. Let us hear from you. And above all things, be glorified. All right. Now, is there absolute truth? Does anybody know what absolute truth is? Without defining the word with the words. What is absolute truth? Does anybody know? She's coughing in the back. Okay. You're good. <clears throat> there you go. Took dishing off of you for that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, come for real. What you got? There's nothing that can disprove it. There's nothing that can disprove it. Anybody else? Absolute truth is... Okay. It's not a lie. It's absolute truth, right? It's not a lie. What's absolutely true? Joseph May's one fine guy, right? It's absolutely true. What? <laughs> okay. You remember that. All right. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 18 says this, where there is no prosthetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. All right, prosthetic vision. How many of you guys know the prophets in the Old Testament? The major prophets, the minor prophets, the B-flat prophets, right? These were guys in the Old Testament who had the ear of God, had his, heard his heart, and would speak truths to the people, right? And so they would give the people truth, and that was to give them order in the way they can walk. How many of you guys parked in the parking lot out here? Now, by chance, how many of you guys parked straight? Why? It's just, it's just, it's just, huh? It freaks me out when people don't. <laughs> What, what is making you park straight? Did you just come in here and say, you know what? I'm going to park in a straight line. And people next to me are going to park in a straight line. As a matter of fact, when I park my car like this, they're going to park that car facing mine. Is that how you parked? Why did you park straight? What was it? They're what? They're guidelines. They're guidelines. Then what did it make you do? It made you go, look how you're sitting right now. I can guarantee you, you're sitting at the angle that your seat is in. Right? Nobody's sitting like this. If your seat is facing forward, you're like this. Are you like this? All right, my favorite one is, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just come like life. I love Jesus, girl. Huh? <laughs> Who you love. Yeah, you know? Don't do that, please. Don't do that anyway. Right? But you're in the, you parked in a straight line. You're sitting straight because your seat, because the lines have made you park that way. They've given you some kind of idea, some kind of order, some kind of vision. Right? Nobody had to come tell you a vision. Nobody was standing outside saying, all right, everybody park straight in the line. No, you just knew the minute you pulled up, I'm going to park straight in that line. Right? And this is what God's word does for us. It gives us absolute truth. Right. Because without a vision, without a prosthetic vision. Now, I'm not saying that if you come up here, I'm going to start laying hands and you fall out. I'm not saying that I got a word of God for you. What I am saying is this. God's word gives you truth. Absolute truth. Because without that, you have no restraint. Right. The Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not put another false God before me. Right? You, you hear those things and you get a vision already. Of straight line, of order. Right? And this word of God, that's what it gives us. Because if we don't, we just do what we want. How many of you have ever worked with little kids? Right? Five? What? What'd you say? I work with little kids. You work with little kids. Right? When you work with little kids and so they don't have any kind of rules or order, is that fun? No. It makes you contemplate a lot of things, doesn't it? It makes you think about, so if I get married, this is what happens, huh? Okay. Hmm. Baby, let's 
so we got to talk, right? Because if you don't have order, the kids go everywhere. When you get them order, it isn't amazing when you say, everybody get in line. Yeah. Everybody gets in line. It's amazing, right? Because it gives you order. It gives you vision. It gives you almost purpose. And this word of God does that. But when we don't have that, we just go chaotic. And without absolute truth, guess what you do? Whatever you will. The famous satanic verse of all time, created by Anton LaVey, do what thou will. Right? That's what you do. You do what you feel, what you please. That's why it says the people cast off restraint. Now, in the good book of Hosea, who was a minor prophet, chapter 4, he says this, Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love, no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murdering, stealing, and committed adultery in Estherville. Oh, sorry. They break all bounds of bloodshed, flows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns and all dwell in it languish. And also the beasts in the field and the birds of the heaven, even the fish of the sea are taken away. Yet let no one contend, let no one accuse, for with you is my contention, O priest. You see stumble, you shall stumble by day, the prophets shall also stumble with you by night, and I will destroy your mother. Ooh, man. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you for being a, a priest to me. Now, did you see what happened in that, in that whole saying right there, Hosea? The people just went crazy because the priest did not give them truth. They need to give them knowledge, right? Because what happens is we start to say there's no absolute truth. And what we're really saying is you can do what you want. Now, the reason why we don't like believing in absolute truth, because it, the way it affects our lives. Right. Because right now what we're going to say, listen, there is absolute truth that Jesus is is God. We'll say all those things. But is it absolutely true that if you continue to give in sin? That you're really not saved. Is it absolutely true that everyone's going to stay married forever? Is it absolutely true that I won't die of sickness? See, the thing is, we like to think of absolute truth in the ways that don't apply to us. I don't like to think of absolute truth as in if I keep sinning because I enjoy it, then I'm not loving God. I don't like to think about it like that. I like to think about it differently. Well, you know, God knows my heart. I make that my absolute truth. Well, you know, listen, God knows I like to look at women. He made me a man. Come on. Uh, you know, because it's not absolute true if you lust out the woman in your heart, then you've done the act with her. No, that's not true. That's not absolute truth. I love when I see people get in this theological debate because they really avoid the real question. How is your heart? It's not the question if there's absolute truth. It's did you submit to Christ in your heart or not? That's the real question. Because we get into a debate that's kind of worthless. We go round and round in circles, but we don't admit our own sinful acts. We want to admit that we like to dive into sin. Right now, how many believe the Holy Spirit can transform you? Does anybody believe that? That God gives the Holy Spirit, He can transform you. Right? Then why do you keep going back to your sin? Hmm? What'd you say? No, that's right. Don't touch this sin. Hey, listen, Jesus, I love you. Okay? But that's my private room. You can live anywhere in this household. You can do whatever you want in my life, but you know, just don't, don't go back here. That's my, that's, that's my place. I don't want you to transform that part of my life. Is it, is it absolute truth that you're supposed to forgive people? Is that absolutely true? All right, then why do we struggle with forgiveness? Maybe there's some trust issues. Trust issues? It's just a really hard thing to do. Really hard thing to do? Mm-hmm. Someone did you wrong. What if I would tell you to forgive them and cost somebody a life? I hear you. But what if I told you to forgive them and cost somebody their life? Somebody had to die in order for you to have the strength to forgive them. I've been trying. Hmm? What if I told you you couldn't do it? You need some other strength to do it. That's the truth. Mm. Guess what? You have other strength to do it. You know where it comes from. By God's grace, I can forgive. How many of you guys know who Paul is? The Apostle Paul. Guess what happened to Paul? He was beaten. I'm not talking about just like, 
I'm talking about they thought he was dead multiple times. He got a whip with the whip of the cat of nine tails. You know what that is? Just imagine me taking a whip outside and putting everything I can think on it. And the purpose of that, that tail is to get into your back and yank stuff out. Then you go back in. You get, you get hit 42 times minus one. Because, you know, don't want to hit him 43. Just got to do 42. Right? How many of you guys have ever been beaten and left for dead? How many of you guys have ever been crucified? Nope. Come on. No, I mean crucified. Maybe take it a step further. Who was left for dead? Anybody? Nobody. Okay. How many of you had your boys turn on you? Your friends. I'm sorry. I forgot where it was. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. I went right to St. Louis and I just, I didn't come off King's Highway. Sorry about that. That was me. Ugh. How many of you had your friends turn on you? Betray you. Turn you in. And in the midst of, of, a, of a, a jury and a trial that you know was a big setup, you didn't defend yourself. You didn't complain. You were quiet as a church mouse. If your, mouse, if your church has mouses, you need to find a new church. Right? No, no, you don't. They don't have mouses here. This is holy. Um, how many of you, in the midst of this persecution, you said, forgive them? Knowing that you were right the whole time. Knowing that this is a great injustice, but you said, forgive them. Right? This is what Christ did. Now, in my own strength, I cannot forgive. I'm going to be honest. I was driving uh, to, to speak somewhere else tonight, and I was struggling with some unforgiveness. And I, and I, and I kept saying, but God, you, come on. You don't know. I mean, you were there. I mean, how could this? This is me. You let this happen to me. You let me suffer this. You know, you, you, you let me suffer and just suffer and suffer. You did nothing. But then... He tells me seven times 70, forgive him. Oh, come on. Are you serious? I don't want to use my theology degree right now. I want, you, I want to be, and listen, so it hurts, it's painful, but at the same time, the grace I have to overcome this is in Jesus. It truly is in Jesus. Now, the question is, do I believe that's absolutely true? Do you believe it's absolutely true that God can give you the grace and the strength to forgive? Or perhaps the reason you don't trust, the reason you're upset, is because it still hurts. And you want that person to come back. I'll get you in a second, sweetie. You want that person to come back. And you want vindication. You want vengeance. You want to repay for what they did to you. You don't want to be kind and gracious and loving. You don't want them to see them in heaven. You want to be the prodigal son's eldest brother. Like, that's a hard thing to come to. And so this is where we fall at the cross and say, God, give me grace. Because it's funny. How many of you believe God will help you pass a test? You take a test at school. How many of you have ever prayed over a test? Because you didn't study. I know. Right. How many of you ever prayed because you didn't feel well and you want to pray for your friend? Right. How many of you ever prayed because you didn't have money you need things to work out? Isn't it easy to pray for those things? But yet when it comes to things like unforgiveness, when it comes to things like our sin, we don't necessarily want to pray about it. We just want to, you know, I, I, can, I can overcome this tomorrow. Or maybe the day after that. But listen, if it's absolutely true that God is who he says he is, if it's absolutely true that his spirit lives inside of me, then guess what? Then i got to trust that. I've got to fall on the feet of Jesus because if I don't, I'm just going to have my own way. Because if I can't forgive somebody, guess what I'm going to do? Everybody that reminds me of that person, I'm going to treat as if they were that person. As hard as you don't want to admit that, that's, that's, that's what happens. And I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to cast off restraint. Because I refuse to get in line with that. With God's truth. Listen, I'm going to tell you, you can't do this on your own. I think I'm going off a little bit where I was... Headed, but listen, I'm gonna tell you this you can't do that on your own. 
This truth is hard to believe. When I read God's word, there's some things that are hard for me to take in, especially when he tells me to live these things out. It's hard for me to do that, but I've got to rely upon the grace of God and his spirit to give me the strength to do it. I'm not saying it's not hard. I'm not saying you want to cry. How many of you guys ever worked out before? Try to get in shape because January 1st came around. Or are you about to get married? And if you did like me, just come 25, 26. <sighs> OK, I look good. Right. Listen, it's OK. having that six pack before you get married. I, I, I had like two packs, but then I got six later on in life. Right. You do everything you can. Like you start working out and you start sweating and you start. Ugh, isn't it hard? Doesn't it hurt? It will hurt the same way when you believe some of these truths that you got to push through this thing. It's hard to believe that God is a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's hard to believe those things when your father was abusive. Or your father wasn't around. How can I call a God a good, good father when I know what a good, good father is? How can I say that Jesus is a friend that sits closer than a brother when my brother betrayed me? It's hard to believe those things. And this is where God's grace comes in to help us to believe. Listen, I, I just don't want you to get lost in the idea of absolute truth. Now, listen, this word of God is absolute truth. What we believe at the core of everything is that and we know that the son of God has come and has given us understanding. So we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself some idols. In other words, keep yourself some things that will lead you away from this truth that will lie to you. This is truth. The world's going to give you every reason why this stuff isn't true. Every excuse that they can think of. But to guess what? At the end of the day, this still is truth. This is what's going to get you through the night, not your therapy sessions. They're good. They're helpful. But I need Jesus to speak to me in the midnight hour. I don't know about you, but I've never had a therapist at midnight remind, oh, what did she say? Do what did he say? Do I remember God's truth and it speaks to me? I'm not making light of therapy, but I am making much of my God and my king. This stuff is what you got to cling to. How many of you getting married out there? OK, just you two. I knew that. Right. You're already married. No. OK. You want to get married in the future. Good, good. Good. Now, listen, you got to cling to God's truth about your spouse, don't you? You got to pray for your spouse, because what we try to do with people, we try to change them, don't we? To excuse me, to make them who we want them to be. That's what we do. Right. Listen, opposites attract, don't they? And then they attack. Right. It just. <sighs> I'm really neat. I'm really messy. She loves me. Then you get married in. You gonna clean that up? Just gonna leave that on the floor, huh? Right? But I'm gonna trust God with this person, right? Because how many of you guys believe in the power of prayer? Then think about the things that you're not praying about. Why aren't you? Well, I believe in prayer. Okay, let's pray about the situation. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna suffer. How many of you guys believe that this word is true? That is important. If raise your hand, if you believe God's word is important, it's true. Raise your hand. How many of you guys think it's vital to your life? How many of you live by it? I like that honesty. Right? If this is absolute truth, then this is what we live by. Even if it hurts, the commandments of God aren't burdensome because we love God. You just got to go for it, man. This is absolute truth. There are going to be people to give you these deep philosophical, philosophical reasons why this stuff isn't true. And guess what? That's just a bunch of babble. At the end of the day, this is what awaits us. This is our life. This is our bloodline. You've got to hold on to this. You've got to believe in this stuff when, when there's nothing left to believe in. The people who wrote these epistles were dying. They were being beaten. What would make a man give his very life just to write a letter speaking this kind of stuff? You know, how, you know what they did to this guy? They put him in a big pot. How many of you guys ever cook? How many of you guys boil some stuff? What happens when you boil stuff? What does it do? It gets soft. It gets soft. What, what happens to that skin and stuff? It gets thinner. What could you do with that? 
peel it right off. Now I want you to imagine you take a grown man, put him in a pot of oil, set it on fire, and you watch him, and he doesn't die, but he comes out. What do you think his skin looks like? Burnt. How do you think he feels? And, and what did you say? A little crispy? Oh, sorry. Yeah, he probably did. Top of the world, the king of the world. You know, DiCaprio. Right? No, but this guy, that's what happened to this guy. And he didn't care. He still shared the truth. What would make a man do that? Would a lie make him do that? He's got to believe that this is true. Paul turned upside down and executed. Still wrote these epistles. Not after he was executed because he was dead. But before that, he still did that. When he was martyred, these guys were beaten and bloodied and bruised. Even the prophets weren't respected. But they still kept to this. It's absolute truth. It's absolute truth. All right. For the sake of time, we're going to wrap this up. So listen, this is my hope and prayer. That you deal with your own issues that you don't believe to, you know, well, God, I don't have that issue. Yes, deal with your real issue. Take it before the Lord and say, God, I believe your word is true. Help me with my unbelief because I am struggling with this issue. Help me to forgive. Give me grace to love. Help me to follow you faithfully by your strength and your power and your might, not my own. That's what I'm asking you to do when you go home. Because this Thursday night, everybody here is saved right now. Right? Because we're, you know, you're in Laker life. Nobody's going to start cursing. Nobody's going to start drinking. Nobody's going to start smoking. Nobody's going to start saying, well, let's have sex. We're not going to do that. For the love of God, we're not going to do that. Right? But then it comes Friday. It's the weekend, baby. I remember being in college on Friday. It's that day I can sin, and then, you know, I got to Saturday and Sunday to repent. I'm just saying, live this out and encourage each other to live this out. So let's pray. Lord, we thank and we love you. There's none like you. God, we struggle with times with absolute truth. God, we, we struggle to believe that you are who you say you are. We struggle to believe that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. We struggle to believe this word at times. But we thank you. We can rely on your Holy Spirit to give us the grace to follow you, to believe in you, and to trust you. God, be with us. Talk to us. And in all things, be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. We all said, Amen.